Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Eric with Suits by DFS, and this is my DFS review video for the 2022 Arnold Palmer Invitational. I don't intend for this being very long, I just want to review the sweet spot process to see how well it did during the week. Of course, we talked about it in the preview and strategy video, through the bucket system, as well as our anchor plays. Let's see how well those did. First, I want to start with giveaways. No giveaways are ran this week because we did not hit the goal for a subscriber giveaway of 320 subscribers. Again, that's not 320 in one fell swoop. That's just eight additional ones to get us over that 320 uh, threshold. So we just need eight new subscribers. If you're not subscribed, please do so. It'll help the channel out and it'll help us running this giveaway for one of you lucky people out there to win $20. And if you want free entries, be subscribed, comment in each of my videos, and then retweet any of the tweets that I post about these videos. You get additional entries just th just by doing that. So I highly encourage that. The other giveaway that I do, a prize picks giveaway. All you gotta do here, sign up on prize picks using the promo code SweetSpot, put at least $20 in your account, and I'm going to give you back those $20. So I'm going to give you 20, regardless of how much you deposit. And, and you're also gonna need a deposit match from me, up to $100. So if you use the promo code sweet spot, whatever you put in there is it's up to you, but you will get a deposit match up to hundred dollars and then you're going to get gifted $20 by me. So it's a win-win and it's more than what any of the other content creators are doing out there. So highly encourage you guys to do that. Let's get into this thing. Let's, pop, let's talk about the tournament. Scotty Scheffler wins again. He won the waste man or the WM Phoenix open. I always catch myself doing that. The w, WM Phoenix Open, that was his first victory. Now he gets a second victory. It's been, what, three weeks or four weeks um, between wins? No, it's been like three weeks between wins. Uh, Scott Scheffler, super hot. Super hot golfer on the planet currently. Uh, you can see Tyrrell Hatton, Victor Hovland, and Billy Horschel all tied for second. Again, Victor Hovland, another, yo uh, another young gun out there. And Tyrrell Hatton... Um, Obviously, he won this in 2020. He's got some good vibes at this golf course, especially when the wind picks up like it did uh, during this tournament. It was havoc out there on Saturday and Sunday with the wind blowing as hard as it was. Seeing the, I mean, a lot of these golfers were shooting over par. Let's, let's look at that, actually. Um, use this sheet here just so you guys can see the scores over here on the side. But you can see a lot of these guys, Victor Hovland, 75-74, two over par rounds of golf on the weekend. Scheffler, on the other hand, an under round par, four under round three, even par round four. That was good enough to get the win. Horschel shoots a 75. Tyrrell had a 78 in round three, but finished up with a three under 69 on Sunday. That's impressive, super impressive. Uh, it was tough conditions out there, especially with how long the rough was, how much the wind was blowing, you can see some of the other guys faltering. Like if you just weren't on your game, high scores uh, were right around the corner. Like uh, Rory McIlroy, how disappointing was Rory this week? With two plus or four over rounds, four over, four over par rounds of golf on Saturday and Sunday's round. Just awful. But I mean, Scotty Scheffler, he's your winner. It was awesome. Guy's dynamite, man. Solid, smart golfer. Um, Victor was also a lot of fun to watch this weekend. Probably went for too many heroic shots uh, over the last, or, you know, over the weekend. But still, he was right in it, and none of his his hero shots really hurt him that much. It just, I think, he probably could have... Uh, I'm not even going to take that away from him. I have nothing against what Victor did this week. I think everyone has their own recipe to success, their own recipe to winning a tournament, and I think if Victor was to play more conservative in his game, I don't know if it's really going to help him as much as people like to think. It's just my, my two cents. Some people are better at right around par. Some people are better shooting birdies, going lights out. And I think Victor Hovland is one of those guys that it's better for him to go for every flag and try to shoot lights out. Because, I mean, it's, it's well documented his short game isn't that great. But I'm not going to spend any more time recapping this. It was a fun tournament to watch. There was a lot of lead changes within the last hour on golf. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. I hope you guys were able to watch it. If not, um, watch the reruns. It was, it was a good round of golf. It, that, that Sunday round was a lot of fun. 
But let's go ahead, let's get into what we typically do, and that's going to be the optimal lineup versus the, um, the GPP winning lineup. So I entered the, um, the $5 drive the green. You can see that over here. Uh, I did not get his points, though. Actually, I can just do that right here. Five hundred and two point five points. Five oh two point five. So the golfers that are in this light blue color, these are your five dollar GPP winning golfers. These are the golfers in that GPP winning lineup. Uh, you had Scotty Scheffler, Billy Horschel, Tyrrell Hatton, Chris Kirk, Bo Hosler, and Pat Perez. Really liked Bo Hosler this week. Uh, I feel like I talked about it in the strategy video. I may not have. But watching the, um, oh gosh, Gravy in the Sleeves. I forget, the uh, Subpar, I think that's what their podcast is. Uh, Bo Hosler loves it when it's tough. It just, I added uh, value to his, his metric on the optimizer so I could run. So he would be included in more of my lineups. Super great. He's an optimal lineup golfer this week. Uh, I'm glad I did. And I'm glad I listened to that. That's one thing you can't really get through listening to DFSers, especially who aren't really tied to golf, like who are more of data nerds that don't listen to what, what goes on. You, there are certain types of golfers. I'm a golfer that's really good at shooting around par. The tougher the golf course, the better it is for me. If you put me on a birdie fest, for whatever reason, birdie putts are harder to hit in than par putts. Like 12 foot par putts are easier for me for whatever reason than it is for 12 foot birdie putts. And I don't know that that's just because I'm just trying to break par, you know, most of the time when I play or, or what, like shooting sub, well, let's say this low 60 rounds really isn't in my arsenal, but I can shoot anywhere between three under to even par basically on any golf course I play. And I feel like that's Bo Hosler. He's never going to win those birdie fests. He even talked about it on that, on that, um, podcast. Uh, so, and th this applies to like Jason, the Jason days of the world, there are certain golfers. So when I get my database up and running and I can publish it to the website, I'm going to use that. And we're going to look at like when the scores are low, who are the better players? And we're going to create a model, uh, or we're going to create at least a, a statistic for that to apply to the model that I current, that I currently use. So those guys get bumps in their, their metric. Because it, it's a it's a it's a true thing. Now it's not going to apply all the time because obviously if your if your swing is awful, it's just never going to be good. But still, or I shouldn't say it's never going to be good. It's going to be hard to justify those those addition or those added ranks. But I have no issue doing that. I mean, Graham McDowell probably doesn't sniff a top ten if it isn't for a hard golf course. He's a grinded out golfer, uh, and a lot of these other guys. Same, it's just going to be the same thing. But anyways, that, that was your GPP winning lineup. I'm sorry to go on a tangent there. I just saw it and I wanted to mention it. Your optimal lineup was Scotty Scheffler, Billy Horschel, Tyrrell Hatton, Gary Woodland, Lucas Herbert, and Bo Hosler. I told you, I, I went ahead of myself talking about the Hosler thing. We're talking about the optimal lineup now as we were talking about the GPP winning lineup before. So your GPP winning lineup scored 502.5 and your optimal scored 525. So there was 23 points in between, rough 22 and a half points. Um, and that means there obviously was a lot of room in order to make, you know, a winning lineup happen between the optimal and the $5. Obviously the optimal is your perfect lineup. And so as long as we're somewhere between those two lineups, you know, that's where we want to be. So I'm a proponent of finding six golfers inside the top 10. Let's see if it's doable. That is kind of the sweet spot, optimal per se. So we have, we could go Billy, or I'm sorry, Scotty, Billy, Woodland, Kirk, Gooch, and Herbert. Those six golfers are all six golfers inside the top 10. They're all under that 50,000 mark. It's 49,800. And they scored... 522.5 points so it's only two and a half points behind the optimal obviously it beats the gpp so we could get all six of our golfers inside the top 10 
and still beat the GPP winning lineup, although it's not the quote unquote optimal. So your sweet spot, that would be the sweet spot optimal. Which we'll get into, um, yeah, we'll get into seeing if the bucket system and the sweet spot process, because obviously this is just based off salary, we'll use the, the bucket conditionals to see if we can, you know, beat the GPP winning lineup or find if it is the optimal, like if the optimal coincides with it. But first, I want to talk about the sweet spot score because that's a huge proponent in this whole sweet spot process. You know, this is based off the model, which golfers are best, you know, because these are going to show up on the optimizer. And that's basically what I run every single week to go with the bucket system conditionals. Um, you know what? Let me do something really quick. I forgot to... I want to just make it easy for us to see the optimal lineup. When we talk about this. So I always sort everything out the way it's supposed to, but I see that it didn't work out. Everything else worked though, except for Pat Perez. Um, let's not go to Pat. Let's just go to Bo. Open this up because I want to. I want to double check. Everyone is the same. Perfect. And then all I need to do is just color Pat Perez blue. It's not perfect all the time. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and put a filter on this. So, sorting by the ranks, what I want to see inside the top 20, so number 20 is Taylor Gooch down here, I want to see at least four golfers that are in the optimal lineup. And we don't have that. We just see two. We have Scheffler and Horschel, which for a, golf, a tournament like this where there's going to be a lot of volatility, that's just going to be the case. You know, I can't get too upset. What I'd like to do is scroll down and see more optimal lineup golfers, and I really don't. I mean, I, I only have three inside the top 40, four inside the top 50. Now we're just getting a little too, too you know... Um, I want to say soft. That's not really the, the term I'm looking for for when it comes to what's acceptable, what's not, but it doesn't meet my standards. So when it comes to the sweet spot score, didn't really work out, but we had a lot of top 20s, a lot of top 10s. So it kind of feels like it was a victory. I mean, there's a lot of top, it just not a lot of missed cuts. So it feels like, you know, a consolation win. It just unfortunate we didn't have a lot of optimal lineup golfers. Now, what I use the sweet spot score in combination with is looking for marquee tee times. So if I sort this out by marquee tee times and actually filter out by this color, we talked about this in the, um, in the strategy video. This is how we are narrowing down our player pool is, is considering the groups that the golfers are in. So if I go and I highlight every three golfers, that's gonna be one group except for the one that Jason Day was in. Or no, no, no. I forget who withdrew here. But either way, that one was a withdraw. So I've highlighted all of the groups. Now, the, the font color that's this light green, that those are just honorable mentions. So we're only focusing on the dark text here. So your Matsuyama Homa list group, Scheffler Zalatoris Sungjae group, Victor, Billy, Hoagie, and then obviously you can see Leishman and Hatton are right there. So let's talk about this. I usually tell you, on average, we see at least two golfers who are in the optimal lineups, or I'm sorry, in the marquee tee times within the optimal lineup. And we have that this week. So we have Scotty Scheffler and Billy Horschel. Those are your only two golfers from the actual marquee tee time pairings in the optimal lineup. But then we have a, an honorable mention, Tyrrell Hatton, who... Their group before, I can't remember who withdrew from that group. I want to say it probably was Jason Day, but I don't think that's true. I don't have any other filters on, so I, I can't remember who was in their original group. Here, let me, let me go look. It's going to bother me, and I'm sure it might bother some of you guys. So if I go Leishman... Uh, it was Jason Day. Okay, perfect. That's that's who I thought it was. 
Uh, there were an honor honorable mention, and I think Jason Day was replaced with David Lipsky. So I know that wouldn't have been an honorable mention group, but it's still it's still notable, right? Because he obviously finished. Uh, Tyrrell Hatton finished as an optimal lineup guy. But anyways, it still goes to, to show you guys, you only want two golfers, or I shouldn't say only two. You want at least two golfers within these marquee tee times. And then you can see Hovland finished second. So that should be good enough, right? Well, it wasn't. He's not in the optimal lineup. We're only talking about the optimal lineup when it comes to these marquee tee time pairings. And really, you probably can't afford to put him with Scheffler in a winning lineup to, with also Billy Horschel. I mean, we can, we can try here a little bit later when I actually run these through the optimizer. But for the most part, it's, I don't think it's going to work out. So that leads me to the bucket system, which I, what I like to do every single week is... I'm, I'm going to hide this. You guys can obviously see all the bucket totals on there. I'm going to hide this so we can bring in this year's totals. Now, I have a formula in here that shows us if the bucket was successful or not. It's looking at how many top 10s finished there. If that's within the projections, if it's not in the projection, like say if it's, it's more, like it's over the top 10, there's actually more golfers in it. It will then use the optimal lineup to determine if that bucket was successful. Because if, if we had like right here, if we had six golfers inside the top 10, and let's pretend I'm not projecting at least six golfers, which I obviously am. But let's say this was four golfers, but we only have two in the optimal lineup. It's still a success because this two is primarily the most important part. We could have three uh, 10K golfers in this bucket that we can't, or we could even have four 10K golfers in this bucket that we can't actually roster together. So why look at this number without looking at the optimal lineups? So with that being said, hopefully you guys understand that when we look at the bucket here or the success bucket with those formula in play or with the formulas in place, we have one, two buckets, actually three buckets. This is more than I thought. Three buckets that did not hit this week, which is unfortunate. Uh, but that still means out of the 36 total buckets, we had 33 that were correct. Um, as long as we didn't put in strict conditionals for this, like I, I did, for this bucket here, I only put zero to two. There were actually three golfers in the optimal lineup. So the bucket system was never going to actually, like if you use the optimizer and you follow the buckets as I have projected, this was never going to hit for us. So there's some considerations to, to put in place, but I'm not too, too worried about it. Like three is a pretty high number. That's very rare. Um, I don't think... I mean, put it this way. I, I don't think that it's it's worthwhile to really to be concerned about. Um, this one is a little bit concerning. We had zero in the top 10 and zero in the optimal lineup, but we wanted at least one. We wanted somewhere between one to three. So that didn't hit. That's a bummer. And then our strokes gained three golfers. We had zero in the optimal in the top 10, and we wanted somewhere between one to three. So that's an, another unfortunate um bucket that did not hit so what i have done is i i have the optimizer up let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see um i have the optimizer up and i currently have the six golfers that were in the optimal lineup already set up you can you can see in the conditionals you know four out of this bucket actually showed up when we had a max of three so obviously that we just weren't going to get there we had a minimum of three here in the last week six bucket and we wanted you know at max two uh last week ones we had three in the optimal lineup and we had a max of one so we kind of set ourselves up for failure when it comes to that and again these are your six golfers in the optimal lineup however if i remove this and we use this bucket criteria sure we didn't hit the optimal lineup but we want to be able with the buckets in place still beat the gpp winning lineup so when i take everything out i have the dk points in for the metric i have all their salaries from the beginning of the tournament uh, and no other conditionals other than the buckets let's see what the highest score 
can be. It's 496.5. So unfortunately, if you recall, that does not beat the GPP winning lineup. GPP winning lineup scored, uh, scored 502.5 points. So we were, we were six points behind it. Um, exactly six points behind, which I guess, let me take a look. I don't think it's, I just want to see what place it's going to be. I can't even get there quick enough. I probably can't. I didn't plan on bringing this up, but because I just did, I might as well look into it just to see if we would have gotten close. Okay, I got it. So, what would 496.5 get us? 496 would get us fourth place. And we would win $7,500 with this lineup here, following the buckets. So, it's not terrible. It doesn't win us the $5 GPP, but fourth place is still pretty darn good. Fourth place scored 489, by the way. Uh, fit, or third place scored 500 on the, on the dot. So we were, we were right in between third and fourth, which means we would be fourth and we'd push fourth into fifth. So yeah, I mean, it's still winning us money, winning us good money if we follow the buckets. Of course, it's extremely... Um, like we'd have to be extremely precise with getting just these six golfers, but if we take Taylor Pendrith out there, cause that's what the optimizer is going to do. We can see what the next lineup would be 494. We're still in fourth place. We can also take KH Lee out of there. As long as we beat 489. Sure. So our top three lineups following the bucket system would still get us fourth place. And it obviously changed some of these golfers around. And it's using the salary conditionals as well. So yeah, I mean, it all looks good. When it comes to the sweet spot process, we could still follow the buckets. We could still win a lot of money. We weren't going to take down a GPP, which is, you know, it's the goal. Like when I do the, the preview and the strategy video, the whole goal is to win a GPP. First of all, the whole goal is actually to win the op or to, to, to hit the optimal. And obviously if we miss that, then it's to hit the GPP winner. But we're trying we're aiming small to miss small well fourth place is pretty close not it's not up to the standard i wish it could be but hey you know we can't beggars can't be choosers we just got to go with what we know um so we're going to continue looking at the bucket system going forward obviously it was 33 out of 36 correct i'm not going to complain about that <laughs> uh i don't have anything else to talk about other than the giveaways remember guys we just need eight new subscribers and we're going to run this giveaway. And for all of you guys that have already participated, you're just getting free entries into it. You're getting additional free entries. So if you participated in this week, last week, and the week before, you know, in the preview strategy or prize picks videos, those are all free entries. And if you retweeted anything on Twitter, that's a free entry. It just gives you a better chance to win $20, 20 free dollars just by subscribing and participating. And if you haven't signed up for prize picks, I do have a link in the description below. Put $20 in your account and you're automatically going to get 20 from me. Probably the very next day. Because I get reports from prize picks to tell me who has signed up the very next day after I get a new, uh, a new follower or a new, um, a, a new person who used the promo code. So super easy, man. You're going to get your money. But I have nothing else, nothing else to talk about. We'll see how well the players championship does this next week. Actually, just join me at the preview video tomorrow and we'll go from there. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.